Dear Heavenly Father, your almighty and gracious Lord, we come to you today and we thank you for giving us the opportunity to come to church and worship even during the COVID-19 situation. Lord, we ask you to continue to keep us safe and bless the country. Lord, we also come and thank you for giving the teens class an opportunity to share their message with you. And we thank you for giving us the capability to follow your path and go in the right direction. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Cup meeting 2021. I will go. We are all children of God and should heed the call of Jesus. We will see hark the voice of Jesus calling. The world is searching for an answer, a ray of hope in a hopeless world. Who can we turn to? 
Where is a rescue? There is someone, he's the answer, he's the light and he light the way. His name is Jesus, and he came to save us. He is the light, 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 light of the world, and he shines, 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 all over the earth, shining bright, bright, bright. He is the light of the world. He is the light, light, light. Light of the world, and he shines, shines, shines all over the earth, shining bright, bright, bright. He is the light of the world. Hey, Gabriella. Weren't you supposed to be going somewhere? I thought you're supposed to be leaving this morning. Yes, but I'm simply trying to find the easiest way to get me to Universe 777. Plus, Master Michael said he wants to talk to us first. Didn't you get the memo? Oh, nice. Could you please pass by Universe number 499 and say hello to McKenna for me? I am her guardian angel. How many times do I have to remind you, Malaika? Universe 700. 499 is what a friend we have in. How many times will I remind you, Gabriella, that you simply joke too much? Charmaine, help me out here. Here, here, I was simply trying to lighten up the mood. It hasn't been easy. You know, I can't believe, I can't really believe that Lucifer would do that. Well, he has done two things now. Which one do you mean? Both. First, he rebelled here in heaven, taking guys with him. Gael, Laila, Rabia, as if that was not enough, he has done the unthinkable. I mean, universe number 1001. I know, right? Adam and Eve, did you know the other day they saw a leaf fall from a tree? They couldn't stop crying. For real? Yep, there. If you what? pass through Galaxy Nema, you can see universe number 4999 and... Ah, Master Michael. Good, there we go. I've been waiting your final instructions. We've looked for you everywhere, but couldn't find you. Where have you been? I was with my father. Gabriella told us you wanted to see us. She said it is important. Yes, I wanted to see you guys. And I wanted to tell you guys that I had a long discussion with my father, and I told him that I will go. No, 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 no. And did he agree? Yes, he did. Well, I don't know where you're going to, but anywhere you go, I will go. Don't you get it, Malaika? Get what? It means he is, go is going to die for Adam and Eve and all their children so that they can be saved and live forever. No. Like the other universes that have not disobeyed. No, no way, Master Michael. There must be another way, surely. You can send me instead. I can die for them too. Yes, you can, Malaika, but it has to be me. No, Master Michael, just let us go. I can go with Malaika and Shamin here too. Aye. I... Remember, my dear angels, that I care for you so much and I will die for you too. I am the one who gave them life and I'm the one who will rescue them again. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In fact, I have a better idea. You're the Lamb of God, right? Yeah. yeah. What if we have them sacrifice lambs instead? Brilliant. Mm. And yet you are saying I'm the one who jokes too much. But there has to be another way, truly, Master. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Before, uh, because six thousand years from. And from today, uh, when I have died for them, I will have many children following me. At Nairobi Central, I can see Furaha, Hera, Steve, and Kiki. At New Life, I can see Joy and uh, Junior, and many, many others all over the world. And they too will follow my instructions and go light their world. Well, in that case, Gabriella, you don't have to go to universe number 499. 
I will go see Makela myself. Okay, but don't forget to tell them the good news. They've been wondering what happened to Adam and Eve and all their descendants. I'll be leaving too shortly. I was wondering if you're still finding the route to follow. Yes, but that's why Jesus is here. I will simply follow him. Hello, children. Hello. Hello. Again.
We've said no, we'll clap louder than the trees of the fields. Testament ran to tell the good news about God's word, and we also want to do the same. Let's stand up as we sing, Run, Peter, Run.
Oh, good morning, Majuto. Kusudi, how was your day? No, I was about to say to you, but then I realized. Aren't we lost? Lost? Ha. Huh. I'm sorry. You and who? You and me. I mean, can't you see? We're in the middle of a jungle. Jungle? No, Majuto. You are my long gone brother. Are in a jungle. Oh, but Kusudi, not all jungles have bears, lions, and tigers, which you're scared of, by the way. Some jungles, they simply have jealousy. See? See, that was always your problem. Nothing ever said or did ever made sense. Now, what does jealousy have to do with anything? Well, you know, jealousy. I don't know how to explain it. Next. God. Yeah. I have, I have nothing to say about the jealousy thing. Look around. Am I the one feeding my father's pigs? I'm in my father's house. Nor am I the one eating funny, funny food. Or you think I've forgotten. Forgotten what? How you chose money over family. You know, I wrote a short song before you left and put it in your money bag, Mr. Majuto. Two brothers, two brothers, and one of them was greedy, greedy mm. brothers. Two brothers, and <coughs> one of them was greedy, greedy. He said, Dad, I want my money, money. He was the prodigal son. <laughs> the other good brother stayed on the farm to worky worky other good brother stayed on the farm to worky worky greedy brother spent his money money he was the prodigal son and remember and you should know the thing about being jealous is that once you're in it it's better to just accept it it's been a year now. I know because I've been counting. I count a lot, you know. I must admit, my work has greatly reduced ever since you took a third of Dad's possessions. What I can't quite count is how much money you have left. Do you think I'd be feeding my pigs if I had money left? Oh, so that's why you're feeding them. Huh. I thought you developed a soft spot for pigs. Huh, funny. Oops, sorry. Funny. So, cut the cut. Tell me, Mr. Majuto, what did you spend your money on anyway? Well, I'm not exactly proud of it. He spent it, he spent it on having fun and drinky, drinky, spent it, he spent it on having fun and drinky, drinky, greedy, bright, shiny penny, penny, he was the prodigal son. The money was finished, and so he felt the piggy piggy's money was finished, and so he felt the piggy piggy's he was broken, kinda stinky stinky, he was the prodigal son. So, that's how you became penniless. Well, say it again. Uh, so what is it then that you miss the most, Mr. Majuto? Well, I miss, what I miss the most is my father. No, I never seem to understand you, young boy. But I gotta go walk the farm now. Any last words for me, brother? Yes. Go tell father that I'm coming home. Home to see him. Whoa, there's nothing left for you here anymore. Don't forget that. What do you mean? Even to be a servant? Not even to be a servant. What's gonna happen? Father. I came back for you. I'm so sorry for what I've done. I've sinned against you and against God. I hope you may find a place in your heart 
Forgive me. Safira. My son, it is time to rejoice. My son, my son. He was lost, but now he's found. He was dead, but now he's alive. Bring the finest clothing so that he may wear it. Thank you, Father. Also, bring the fattest cow. It is time to celebrate. He went home to daddy to say I'm really sorry, sorry. Went home to daddy to say I'm really sorry, sorry. Dad said, son, let's throw a party, party. He was the prodigal son. You know what, Majoto? You're right. I know. I am in a jungle. I know. Let me tell you something. One day while you were away, I was heading the ship. When evening came, I couldn't find Amber, so I left the flock and went to look for her. Found on the edge of a mountain, tired and hungry, so I carried on my shoulder and took her home. So we got home, I told her the story and celebrated. Oh, Amber, a poor sheep. Yeah, you know what? I have something to give you too. Interesting. Remember when you asked me how much money I've left, yeah? Yeah. So, was one time I had 10 coins left. And then, so I just decided to, you know, buy a small house, live my life. And then one day, I lost one of my coins. And so, I looked all night for it. And I finally found it. And I want you to have it. Oh. You gave me the last of your possessions. I'm glad to have you for a brother. Yeah, you should. How about... Well, you know, you know what? No matter what jungle we are, as long as we all come back to our Father, Jesus Christ our God, He will save us and take us back home with loving hands. How about we all sing a song? Yeah. Yes, let's sing a song. God's love is so wonderful, God's love is so wonderful, God's love is so wonderful, oh wonderful love. So high that you can get over it, so low that you can get under it, so wide that you can get around it. Oh, wonderful love. Uh, let's pray. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, our Creator, Lord, we thank you for letting us gather here today to hear the story about the prodigal son. Lord, please let us learn that even if we are lost, we can always come back to you and you forgive us for anything we've done. Uh, Lord, thank you for everything you've done for us throughout the past few days. And thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Children, we as the teens are in God's army. So stand up and sing with us, I am a soldier.
children, now that we are all part of God's army, let's get prepared by putting on the armor of God. the children yet? Are they coming? Hey, Ada. The children are actually here already. Hiya. What have you been observing all this time? I've been trying to see if these binoculars can take me back 4,000 years ago. Ha, ha, ha. Marie, Marie, Marie. 4,000 years back. Where would you want to go back 4,000 years back anyway? It is not a time travel machine. Plus, time travel machines do not exist. Do you remember Angel Michael and Master, Master Michael and Angel Gabriella? Yes. And do you remember Charmaine and Malaika? Yes. And do you remember him telling the angels that he will come and die for, our, for us? Of course I do. Now tell me something I don't know. Well, today in the lab, we want to do an experiment that will remind the children of how Master Michael took away all our sins. Oh, you should have said that. Did you know that when he came, they called him Emmanuel to mean God, God with us. us? And yes, they also called him Jesus to mean to, to rescue. rescue. Well then, boys and girls, let's get this experiment started. I'm Ada. And I'm Marie. And, and together, together, we are Christian scientists. scientists. Let us take out our Bibles together and go to the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. And it says, come now, come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Says who? The Lord. That though your sins are red like scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. And though your sins are red like... Here, this is us, and this represents the sin that makes us, that is red like scarlet. Here, children, as you can see, this, our sins may are red as scarlet. Now, boys and girls, this silver coin represents you and me. And this plate is the world. You and me are in the world. But you see, the devil sometimes tempts us to do wrong things, to sin. Children, this represents our sin. Do you remember? And when, as we keep sinning over and over and over again, sin separates us from God. Now, here comes the good news. 
Jesus said to his father, 4,000 years ago, I will go and I will die for them so that they may have eternal life. But for him to, and so he came to light up the whole world. But for him to light up the whole world, he had to, his light had to go off. He had to die. And so the people came. They beat him, they buried him, they crucified him, and they buried him in a tomb. You know, Marie, no story is both sad and beautiful like the story of Jesus. See, the light has gone off. Jesus' light has gone off, and he has taken away all our sins. Look, Ada, look. I can see the coin. That's you, that's me, that's the children, and that's everyone in the world. See? Sad but beautiful. Children, when you go to school, when you go to play, when you go for mission, when you go to the world, tell them that Jesus came and took away all our sins. Tell them that the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Tell them that Jesus says, come now, let us reason together, that though your sins are red like scarlet, they shall become white as snow, and though your sins are red like crimson, they shall be made white like pure wool. Today we have learned that Jesus came and took away all our sins so that we can have eternal life. And also, when you go to them, tell them that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, guess what? You can try this experiment at home, but if you are not sure, get someone else to light the candle up for you. Here at our lab, we like to sing while doing experiments, so join us. Let's talk about Jesus, the King of Kings is He, the Lord of Lords Supreme, through all eternity. The great I am the way, the truth, the life, the door. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Oh, my loving brother, when the world's on fire, don't you want God's bosom for to be your pillow? Hide me over in the rock of ages, rock of ages, cleft for me. Oh, my loving sister, when the world's on fire, don't you want God's bosom for to be your pillow? Hide me over in the rock of ages, rock of ages, cleft for me. Well then, boys and girls, that's it in our lab today. I'm Ada. And I'm Marie. And until next time, we will go. And more, and it is in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Oh, you're here again, Mister. Hello, and how are you today? My day has been good. Hmm, I am again in the invitation chapter sixteen. I told you this is the gamma of your writing book. It is interesting. That's my favorite book of the Bible. Wow. Yesterday, the Revelation chapter 16, verse 17. And then, how it starts is the seventh bowl. The earth utterly shaken. Wait, children. Do you remember what we have been learning all this time? Almost. Okay, so just a little reminder for you, children. On the first day,
is. It is very interesting. This is the last conflict that is going to happen upon this world. And before we start, let us pray. Father in heaven, give us wisdom. Help us to understand in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, remember what we, what we finalized with yesterday. John says in verse number, third, verse number 14, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. These are spirits of devils which work miracles and they go to deceive the kings of the earth and all the world to prepare them for the great battle of the Lord God Almighty. God is going to come back again. And because the devil is aware, he sends spirits like frogs to deceive the whole world and to tell them that God is not coming. We can make this world a better place. We can cure all the pandemics and we can cure all the plagues and the people will be deceived. But the Bible tells us, Jesus Christ wants us in verse number 15. Yes. Behold, I come as a... Imagine, they will be ashamed because God has given us warnings in the Bible and yet people don't read the Bible. They don't know what is happening. Every time there is a problem in the world, they are saying, no, 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 don't worry. The world is going to be a better place. We are going to get a better government. Then the Bible says in verse number 16, he gathered them together to a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Now, people think that this is a place near Iraq or near Israel or near Kuwait or near Lebanon. But Armageddon represents the whole world because the whole world will go, is going to become the place where the great controversy, the fight of the devil and his angels and everyone that follows the devil and the fight of God and his people is going to be fought. And the Bible tells us that because of this reason, God is going to unleash the last plague so that he can deliver his people. That is why the Bible tells us in verse number 17, and the seventh angel poured his plague in the air. And I heard what? A love was killed. That is final. This is what Jesus said when he died. Yes. Every time heaven gets a victory over the world, when they killed Jesus, Jesus also said, it is done. And they resurrected again. This time, they think they are going to destroy God's people. But when the angel of God poured his last plague on the planet, a voice from heaven shouts again, it is done. Then in verse number 18, we read a very interesting passage of the Bible. It says, John says he's seeing a vision. By the way, a vision is almost like a dream. It, but it never comes only when you are sleeping. It can even come during the day. John says that when he was seeing his vision, he had voices and he had great, he had voices and he saw a lot of lightnings and he heard a very great earthquake that shook the whole world. So mighty earthquake and very great. Then in verse number 19, the Bible says, the great city of the earth was divided into how many parts? One, two, three. Three parts. And imagine what happened to all the other cities of the nations like Nairobi, New York, Johannesburg, Kampala, Uganda. What happened to Addis Ababa? What does the Bible say? The panic thing all the cities of the earth are going to fall 
when God is going to come and judge the world. That is go why God wants us to prepare ourselves because he is coming again. All these cities are going to be destroyed. All the kingdoms of this earth are going to be destroyed by God. So the Bible says, even the cities of the earth are going to be destroyed. Even the roads that the Chinese have built for us. Wow. All the superhighways are going to be destroyed. Everything is going to be destroyed. Then the Bible says, God remember something. What did God remember? And God, and the great Babylon was remembered before God. This means God remembered Babylon. God remembered Babylon. Remember what Babylon did to all the earth? Yeah. Babylon deceived all the earth and told the people of the earth that they should not worship the true God. And they told the, all the earth that Sabbath is not the day of worship. You can worship any day. Yet the commandment says, The commandment says, Remember, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy for the Lord your God worked six, made this world in six, six days, days and rested on the seventh day. Yes. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. God remembered Babylon. And the Bible says that when God remembered Babylon, he was going to give Babylon the cup of the fury of his anger. Wow. Babylon was going to drink the last cup of the anger of God. Now, remember, some of the people don't believe that God can do a great earthquake upon this earth. Do you remember in the year, in the year 1730, the day was November 1st. The city of Lisbon, it was on a Saturday at around 10 a.m. The city of Lisbon, people were going to church on that day. Yet, it was, it was the day when the Catholics were celebrating the Holy Saints Day. When they were going for Mass, the city of Lisbon was shook by a mighty earthquake. But now the Bible tells us God is going to send the final greatest earthquake. And when this earthquake takes place and God remembers the city of Babylon, mm -hmm. do you know what happens? Everyone starts running away. They run to the mountains. Read verse number 19. What happens to the mountains? No, verse number 20. Our mountains were not found. They went to the mountains, but the mountains were not found. They could not, found, they could not find the mountains, and yet they wanted to run and hide themselves in the mountains. The book of Revelation chapter 6, verse number 14 tells us that the kings of the earth and the rich men and the mighty men and the chief captains and every bondman and every free man ran to hide themselves in the dens and in the rock and in the rocks of the mountains. And they cried to the mountains. What were they saying to the mountains? Follow us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Because the great day of the Lord was coming. They were running to the mountains, but now Revelation tells us they could not find the mountains and all the islands were running away because they knew that God who created the heavens and the earth is coming back to deliver his people. What is this? They obey the creator. We might not know, but all creation obeys the creator. Then finally, in verse number 21, we are told about what happens to the other living people who disobey the commandments of God. They are fell from heaven, great hails from heaven. The weight of one hail was about 45 kilograms. And it fell upon the people who did not worship the true God. Forty-five kilograms. Imagine the weight of one of them. That's heavier than me. I imagine. And it falls so hard because it falls from heaven. And the people are destroyed. Why? Because they did not worship God. But read about what they said when, 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 the, when the hailstones were falling on them. They are blaspheming God. They cannot apologize. They cannot repent. 
Do you remember why they cannot repent? Yes, so no one could enter. Now they are behave- Now they are blaspheming the name of God. They are saying, God, you are, you are not good. You did not deliver us. But God gave them chance to come for camp meetings. God gave them chance to read their Bibles. God gave them chance to listen to their teachers and to obey their parents, and yet they refused. Now, finally, they are destroyed. God is going to destroy this earth and is going to make a new heaven and, and a, a new earth where there shall be no more pain, there shall be no more death, there shall be no more COVID, and people in that city will not need face masks because all the plagues will pass away. That is very good. No face masks. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for the wonderful lesson that you have reminded us that you are coming again. The Bible tells us, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in Jesus Christ. For in, the, for in, for in, the, for in heaven, there are many mansions. You have promised us, if it weren't so, you would have told us. You have gone to prepare a place for us. And we pray that when you come back again to receive us to yourself, you may find us ready by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye, Amen. children. See you next time. Meet you in heaven, my dear friends. Amen. Sina. Tunafaa kujitayarisha kupigana shetani. Sisi kama teens class tuko tayari kupigana shetani. Sisi ni askari. Sisi ni askari. Sisi ni askari.
children, now that we've spread the message of God, let's now bring in the sheaves. Kind of loving Father, thank you for this day, thank you for the gift of life. Now as we're going to listen to Pastor Tubal's uh, sermon, please help us to understand what she's going to be passing on today. For in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Children, was it an amazing session with the teens class? I now welcome Pastor Tubalishe for a, a, another popcorn session. Please feel at Jesus' feet.
Hello, 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 hello. All right. Ah, yes, I'm here. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who joined us for our prayer and fasting session today. It was so awesome. We got your prayer request. You can continue sending your prayer request and thank give, thanksgiving. My team and I will continue praying for you. Um, before we do anything, we are going to begin with prayer. Um, remember, when we start our prayers, we say, Jesus loves me. Today, we're going to go back to Ndevele, just to remind us, Ujesu Uyangi Tanda. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Pray after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. Now, as we learn more, help us to understand and to apply in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and believe. Amen. Remember, I told you my favorite food is popcorn. I want to thank one parent who brought me a packet of popcorn. Keep the popcorn coming. When I come to your house, whatever country I come to, make sure there is popcorn. Just popcorn. And remember, popcorn is a reminder that one day the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Our bodies will be transformed. We'll get new bodies that will not feel any pain or death, just like the Revelation series just, just reminded us. There will be no more death, no more pain. We will be new. Amen? I can't wait for that day. So we are going to pop. We are going to imagine the trumpet has been sound and the dead in Christ will pop out of their grave, graves first and us who are alive and see Christ in the sky will follow and pop to the sky to spend forever and ever with Jesus. Are we ready, young men and young ladies, to pop? All right. One, two, and a half. And three quarters. And nine tenths. Three pop! Yes, we are going to pop and spend forever and ever and ever with Jesus in the sky. I cannot wait for that day. Thank you for popping with me. Now, yesterday we learned an important lesson about practicing with our swords. That the word of God, our Bibles, are a sword that can, that can destroy our enemy's kingdom, and our enemy, we say it was, is the devil. Now, I want to share something very, 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 very important, but before we do that, I just remember, we have to sing, I am yours, Lord, and since I have got teenagers today, I'll introduce a new song, because I know you guys can catch it quickly. to Jesus and everything we do, we cannot do without him using us. So we are his cup, we are his candle, he makes us shine. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I want to introduce an awesome, interesting song. See, when we go, I will go, we go with Jesus. Now when we go with Jesus, we have to look like Jesus, we have to behave like Jesus, we have to walk like Jesus. In whatever situation we are in, we have to behave in a way that Jesus would have behaved had he been in that situation. So for that, for that I'll introduce an, a simple, simple, awesome song. 
You know how when you have a gift, you wrap it up? So this song goes, I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. So I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. And the second time is I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with God. For those of us who are not flexible, this might be hard, but don't worry, it's not that hard. <laughs> All right, I am, it goes, I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with God. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. I am wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up. Wrapped up, tied up, tangled up with God. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with God. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. I am wrapped up, tied up, tangled up. Wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up with God. Simple song, right? So now we'll take it a bit higher. I think it was a bit low. Thank you, Kevin. Ah. So we'll sing it and it will get a bit faster. Let's go. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with God. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. I am wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up with God. Master, I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am Tangled up with God, I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus, I am wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up with God. If there was time, we would have sang it a bit faster. But when we go out there, people should see who they should see. Jesus, I will go with Jesus. So when they see us, they see Jesus. Jesus wrapped up. Jesus tied up, Jesus tangled up with us. And yesterday we learned about the fattest man, fattest, fattest man in the Bible, and his name was King Eglon. And we learned that Ahad, in Judges chapter 3, Ahad had to learn how to fight the enemy. And for him to fight, God told him to make a sword and to hide it under his raiment and go and attack the enemy. And we discussed yesterday that for him to attack and fight the king, he had to learn how to use his sword. He had to learn how to use his sword and practice until when he met the king, he managed to kill him. So it is with us. We must learn how to use our sword. In Ephesians chapter 6, it tells us that our sword is the word of God, the word of the spirit. Is that true? It is very, very true. Now, I wanted us to think, since today I've got teens, and I know we need some important skills. People think the Bible is the most boring book in the world. I want you to know, my dear, my dear gentlemen and ladies, that the Bible is the most important book in the world. And if we study it right, it will, it will have so much fun with it. Now, for us to study the Bible and understand it very, very well, there are things we need in our lives. You know how when you have a best friend, you want to spend enough time with that friend, isn't it? So it is with Jesus Christ. You have to spend time with him. God made each and every one of us differently. Some of us, how many are more active in the morning? You wake up, you just have energy. No one is active in the morning here? Yeah? Okay, one, two. How many are more active? For some strange reason, they are more active in the afternoon. That one is very rare. How many are more active at night? For some reason, they feel better studying at night. 
I have the way God made is that sometimes the information gets better into your head in the morning. Some of us, information gets better, enters in our head very well in the afternoon. Some of us, it enters very well at night. So you must have a special time. Yes, it's important to wake up in the morning and do morning devotion with God. Very, very important. Also, at the same time, you must select a special time to spend with God when your brain is at its best. The very best time for you to study your other subjects will be the very first very best time to study the word of God. So number one, you pick a special place and special time to study the word of God. Is that clear? Say amen. Now, number two, you must know yourself. Again, God made each and every one of us differently. God made each and every one of us. We learn differently. For example, there are people called auditory learners. They learn very well by hearing. Those annoying, I call them annoying because I'm one of them. Those ones who sit in front of the class because if they sit at the back of the class, they won't catch anything. So for me to understand the teacher, I have to sit in front, write the notes, and listen carefully so that when the exam comes, I can remember everything the teacher said. My grandmother was auditory. No, she was not auditory. Yeah, she was auditory. She could tell you, you know, in 1972, your father said to me, that person is an auditory learner. There are those people who, when they watch the movie, they can tell you, hey, you know, in the movie, and then this, and this, and then you say 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 this. You are an auditory learner, which means the way you should learn the Bible to understand the Bible better, you must listen to the Bible. The, the, our technology these days has got ways for you to actually download an audio Bible and listen to it. God, God, God has created you as an auditory learner, which also means you can also read the Bible out loud and say, ah, the ten virgins, then the kingdom of God shall be likened unto the ten virgins. Because you are hearing it, it sticks better in your mind. Is that clear? And then there are visual learners, the likes of Pastor Tuba. Those who want to see what is being said. So what I do after I read the Bible, I sit and start visualizing, imagining each and everything that happened. Oh, so the ten virgins. Uh-huh. What were they wearing? Were they wearing pink dresses or blue dresses? Uh huh. And then they fell asleep. Uh huh. And then what happened? And then they woke up. Like your brain should learn to sit and visualize the Bible. You know, these words, these words are true. So for you to understand and have fun with the Bible, you must sit like you enjoy. Like some of you like it, you enjoy watching movies, and you say a movie is more fun than the Bible. Ah ha ha. The Bible is more fun than the movie. Why? Because this. What is in the Bible is more true than that which you watch in the movies. So you have to sit down and visualize, see them running, see them, see, 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 the, see the ten virgins knocking on doors saying, please, please, give me, give me oil. Imagine it, imagine what time of the day it was. Were they feeling cold? What were they wearing? Visualize. God made, some of us are visual learners. Then there are those of us who for some reason, and I think this is a good number of, of those my age, who have to read and write everything. They will not understand unless they, they listen, then they read it, then they write it. Then they walk around with it in their pockets. So before the exam, they are there. Uh -huh, wait, what? Uh -huh, they, write, they read it. It has to be written over and over again so that it sticks in the head. Don't worry, that is how God made you. So there is a woman in, the, in, in America who actually writes the Bible every year. She starts the year. She starts by writing the Bible. So because she writes the Bible every year, the Bible has stuck in her mind. So for you to memorize the Bible, some of you will need to write the verse many times for the verse to stick in your head. You are not thou. It's just that you are not a visual learner. You are not an auditory learner. You are a reader and writer. I thought I was thou growing up. My sister could just sit and listen and understand everything. For me, I had to sit, read and write, read and write, read and write, listen, read and write, read and write, listen. That's how God made you. So you are very, very intelligent. By the way, what I'm sharing with you with the Bible also applies to, applies to all the subjects you are studying in high school and in primary. Just then what kind of a learner you are. And then there are those who are called kinetic learners. Now, those are practical learners. You can't tell them this is how you cook ugali, you take water, you put the portion. No, no, no. For them, they have to be there in the kitchen with the ugali and the water. They see the water boiling, they put the unga. Then they, those are practical learners. So some of you for, you, for the Bible to stick in your head, you actually have to reenact it. You have to imagine, uh-huh. And then Goliath took the stone. You're reenacting the Bible. Then he swung it in the air. Then you're on the other side. And then the stone hit Goliath. And then Goliath fell on the ground. 
for you, for the Bible to stick in your head, you have to start imagining it. That is how God created, created you, because you are a practical learner. Is it clear? So let me see, how many are visual learners? Yeah, no, okay, there's a visual learner, okay. How many are auditory learners? Okay, I see auditory learners, okay. How many are kinetic practical learners? Practical learners, okay. How many are read and write learners? So they have to read and write. Uh, <laughs> some people are in all the categories. That is how God created you because that's how the information sticks in your mind. So figure out what kind of a learner you are. So as you read your Bible, it becomes very, 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 very practical. Is it clear? Right. Now, my time is almost up. I wanted to share from... Matthew chapter 25, the story of the ten virgins. The story of the ten virgins talks about how they were supposed to go for a wedding. Jesus, Jesus is sitting on a mountain, he's telling this story, he's seeing people going for a wedding, and then he starts to tell this parable of the ten virgins. And now as they were going for the wedding, they were supposed to wait for the groom to come and take them for the wedding. That was the custom of those days. So they sat somewhere and waited. And amongst those who were waited, there were the ten virgins. As they were waiting, they had their little lamps as well. But as they were waiting, the bridegroom took long to come until they fell asleep waiting for the, for the groom. So when the, when, the, when the groom came, there was a loud noise. The groom came, pa 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 and everyone woke up, they shook each other up. Hey, hey, the groom is here, wake up, wake up, the groom is here. And, and they woke up, and as they, as they were trimming their lights, putting on their lamps, their lamps, some of them, their lamps did not go on. Why? Because they did not have oil. So those who had extra oil put the oil in the lamp, and they started going for the wedding. Those were the five wise virgins. But the five foolish virgins did not have the oil to put in the car, in, in, in the in the lamp so that the, 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 the lamp can go on so they can go for the wedding because everyone needed their own lamp. Why am I sharing this today as my last sermon for this session? For us to be able to go to heaven, not only do we need to learn and practice to use our Bibles, we need the Holy Spirit to help us understand the word of God. Now in the story, the lamp represents the word of God. You cannot read and understand the word of God without the Bible. Not only that, now, I'm, yes, you cannot read and understand the word of God without the Holy Spirit. Now, when you've got the Holy Spirit, you have to pray for the Holy Spirit. Even when times are hard, you pray for the Holy Spirit. But when Jesus comes, when the bridegroom comes, you hear him and you're ready to go and you've got the Holy Spirit. Now, boys and girls, those who resurrect on resurrection morning are those who would have obeyed the Holy Spirit. Is it making sense? Because the difference between the five virgins who were wise and the five virgins who were foolish is that they did not have the Holy Spirit. So I pray that God grants you the Holy Spirit as you study his word to understand and apply everything he teaches you. So when the trumpet is sound, you will pop up to eternity to spend forever with Jesus. So I want to pop one last time. This is my last sermon. Are we ready to pop? Jesus is, pop, is coming for those who, who obey the Holy Spirit, amen? Who study the word of God and apply it and share it with others. Is that true? It is true. So on the day of the resurrection, Christ is going to come and only those who obey, and only those who obey the Holy Spirit, who had the Holy Spirit, are going to resurrect from their graves. But those who did not obey, those who decided, let me watch Marvel movies for the rest of my life, those who decided I will live any of it, I will not obey God, I will not obey my parents, I will not keep, all of those will not pop on, on that day. And it will be said if you are not there. I want you to be there because heaven will be boring without you. And heaven will definitely be boring without me. We all know this. Right, so we're going to pop and then we're going to pray. Are we ready to pop? The trumpet sounds, one, two, three. When the trumpet sounds, we're going to pop out of our graves. I can't wait for that day to come. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Dear Jesus, we are so grateful for your love and your mercy towards us that you, you died on the cross for our sins. Not only that, Jesus, that you are coming back to take us home, but 
as we're waiting for you, help us to be wise. Help us to, be, help us to listen to the Holy Spirit. Help us to study your word and apply it and share it with others. Fill us with your love and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We pray all this believing and trusting in your mighty name, King Jesus. Amen. God bless you.